Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Ravelry Instagram and YouTube. Today is Tuesday, the 20th of January, 2015, and this is episode 112, Secrets Explode. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. Did you, did you have a good holiday weekend? We had a pretty good holiday weekend. Um, Gabriel didn't have school yesterday, so he and Steve went to a, uh, I don't know, I don't remember what it's called. Oh, it'll be right here. It's a space and airship museum that's about an hour and 10 minutes from here. They went, Mara and I did not because Mara would not have enjoyed it, but Gabriel apparently loved it. And I can't wait until Mara's a little bit bigger so we can all go. But um, I'll put some pictures in. I know it was really cool when he came home and told me all the stories and he was so, so excited. Um, there was a, a sad happening this week. My Legolas socks, I don't remember when I made them, but sometime in the past two-ish years because I podcasted while I was making them, um, they have a hole and it's a pretty substantial hole, which I am going to darn because I am... Um, I'm not giving up these socks and I don't have any more of this yarn because I used it in my sock yarn blanket so I can't just like rip out the toe and re-knit it. So I'll be darning that this week and maybe if I remember I'll show you next week. It is my first pair of socks that has officially worn out since I started knitting. You may remember 11,000 years ago. I think it was the first like the the second or third episode I had to darn a sock because Steve put them on and then ripped it on a nail or something. I don't know. So I had to darn that. But this is the first pair of socks that has actually gotten a hole in it from use. So, and it's mine. And this is made using um, Madeline Tosh sock, which does not have any nylon. But it held up for two years before I got a hole. So yeah, I'm still going to make socks with yarn that doesn't have nylon in it. I mean, I'll use it for, I'll use that yarn for other things, shawls, hats, etc. Too, but I'm not going to shy away from yarn that I want to use for socks just because it doesn't have nylon in it. So, need to fix those. Anyway, on to actual interesting things, right? The steampunk knit along is going on, and I have decided, because we're already two-thirds of the way through January, and I have not opened a chatter thread or finished objects thread and I haven't even been on Ravelry really at all this month so I don't know if someone else opened a thread which would totally be fine if someone else did thank you you're amazing I'm sorry that I haven't so because I have not I am extending the steampunk knit along the finished object should have been finished between January 1st or well through <laughs> rather March 31st so instead of January, February, it's January, February, March now. Also because I might need some more time to do my steampunk things. I didn't even work on my project at all this week. Yeah. So it's now three months instead of two months. So if you weren't going to join in, now you can because you have an extra month. Um, there are up to three entries per project. Go back and watch previous episodes about it. Whips are okay. I am going to structure this podcast a little bit differently this week because I am going to show you the um, the holiday knitting that I finished, but it has not yet been sent out. I'm hoping to do that tomorrow, but still people would be able to see their things before they got them. So I'm going to do them at the end so I can excuse my friends from seeing their things before they get them. On to works in progress. I mostly worked on the things that I finished this week, but I did make some progress on the tiramisu blanket, which is a pattern by Alicia Paulson. I was hoping to be much further along in this, but then it got set aside because I decided to finish those other projects. So where was I last week? I think that I was about here. So I think I did this much this week. I didn't get through balls five and six 
of the yarn, but I'm getting pretty close. This is what the skein is looking like. So um, now that I'm now that I have freed up myself from the Christmas knitting from 2014, I know it's almost the end of January and I was still knitting on Christmas 2014 things, whatever. I don't care. Sometimes these things take longer than we think they were going to. Anyway, I should be able to finish this by next week and hopefully finish a couple other baby things by the end of the month, which was my goal. And um, the yarn that I'm using is I love this yarn in the sport in sport weight in the naturals multi I'm using the USJ hook, which is a 10 or a 6.0 millimeter. I don't even know if that's going to focus for you at all. Um, so that's what I'm using to make it. I will be using other yarn for the border, but you will see that next week because I'm finishing this or getting it very close to finished in the next week. Uh, I also did some spinning, but it appears that I am not prepared and left my spinning down on the kitchen counter, which is where I keep it during the week so that when I'm cooking and I have just a few minutes, I can spin a few lengths because it's easier to set down um, spinning than knitting. And it's easier, it's easier to pick up and go with spinning than it is to pick up and go with knitting. There's just a lot less fiddling to have it be a start stop thing. So this, but you know, it's spinning. So it doesn't really, I haven't made so much progress that you'd be able to tell. So it's okay that I'm not showing you. I worked on that barn raising square that I had started last week and I am counting it as finished because all I have left to do is the bind off. So this is what it looks like. I never bothered changing it over to circulars because I was lazy. Um, it is the Peyton's Croy Sock Clover Colors. And this was one scrappy bit from the, um, the leftovers of the skein. And then this was another scrappy bit from the larger leftover skein. I kind of like, I kind of like it, how it's more of a stark contrast instead of a nice transition from that yarn. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm not upset with how it turned out. New things. I will show you another skin of yarn from Josh. This is fleeced art, fleece artist, rather, trail sock, which is 80% merino, 20% nylon in the forest colorway. And it is just super pretty. I've used Fleece Artist before, but not this base. So I'm pretty excited about that, and I just love these colors. I don't know what it's going to be, but hopefully I will use it for something for me. Unless someone else comes along and it's perfect for them, because, you know, sometimes yarn wants to be for people who are not me. Frequently, yarn wants to be for people who are not me. And this... I do not remember what this fiber is. Josh told me, and I didn't write it down, and I feel like I should remember, but I don't remember. So it's just really pretty. I don't know the fiber content other than I'm not allergic to it, and it is pretty soft, but maybe not, maybe not next to skin soft. So not a cowl. Probably mitts would be fine, though. I don't know. It's very pretty. Last week, my file corrupted when I was talking about what I had been reading, so let me fill you in. I started a book called Life in Motion by Misty Copeland. She is a ballerina who came to ballet late in life. She was 11, I believe. She came from a very low-income family, very shaky background. Um, her mother married and divorced many times. They lived in a variety of areas. She and her five siblings, I think. Um, I haven't read it in a few days. I've been reading other things or not reading as the case may be. Um, 
so I don't remember exactly, but many siblings, more siblings than I have, which is why I can't remember. She either has five siblings or she's one of five. That always gets confusing when it gets to numbers more than four for me. I don't know why it just does. She dances with ABT now. So she is an established ballerina. Um, the story is pretty interesting. Again, I'm reading a biography, so it's not my favorite thing, autobiography. It's not my favorite thing, but it's still good. And I enjoy, I enjoy ballet. Um, I've actually never been to a ballet, but I always wanted to be a ballerina. I took a ballet class in um, kindergarten and I always wanted to be a ballerina, so I'm fascinated with the idea of ballet. And I would love to one day go to a ballet. I just haven't. So it's really interesting to hear about um, learning how to become a part of that world. I greatly enjoy the book so far. I'm probably halfway through it. And I will tell you more about it next week when I finish it because it's a pretty short book and it's an easy read. I think that I just needed to take a little break from it because I was just coming off of Rogue Warrior, which was another autobiography, and I needed um, a novel instead of nonfiction. I'm still listening to Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. I will be halfway through it this week. I need to go pick up the next set of CDs from the library. I'm not quite there. I think I have two more discs in the first half of the audiobook, so probably another hour of listening. So yeah, I need to go pick up the next bit of that. Um, it's, it's in the part, if you've read the book, it happens during the, um, the Civil War, and Right now, Scarlett is going back to her home. She had been staying in Atlanta instead of her home, which is not very far away, but far enough away to not be the big city. So she's running away to home, and she just arrived. It's um, It got a little bit boring for me, honestly, listening when she just was terrified all the time. I just think that I don't like Scarlet, so I didn't, I didn't care about her as a character. So I think I spaced out a little bit when I was listening to that part. That's horrible, right? I should go back and re-listen, but I'm not going to. I do go back and re-listen when I find that I'm thinking about other things instead of the audiobook that I'm listening to, because my brain goes like 8,000 directions all the time, and usually one of those directions is the audiobook, but sometimes not. And when one of those directions isn't the audiobook, I tend to go back and re listen to the track that I stopped listening to. Can you hear Molly outside my door? She misses me. She says, Mom, I love you so much and I miss you. But I'm ignoring her because she doesn't need to be in here right now. Molly is my dog and she loves me so much. So much. I also started reading. An Abundance of Catherines, which is by John Green, who wrote The Fault in Our Stars, which is an amazing book, but don't read it at work because you will probably cry. Or at least don't finish it at work. Anyway, An Abundance of Catherines is about a child prodigy who is growing up and is not quite a child anymore, and he only dates girls named Catherine with a K. He, um, I'm not very far into it. I read the first three chapters last night and the book is really fun because it has, it has footnotes frequently. So you can see footnote, footnote. And they're just, um, it's, it's mostly flavor text. It's to give background on what's being talked about. Some of them are actual footnotes that are useful to have, such as Sitz Binkler. That's probably pronounced incorrectly. 
Um, a German word, slang for wimp, that literally means a man who sits to pee. Those wacky Germans, they've got a word for everything. So it's a little bit of flavor, but also information that I wouldn't know because I wouldn't know what that meant. And I probably wouldn't look it up as I was reading it unless it happened more than once in the story. Because I don't, I don't tend to stop to look up words unless I really need to know what they mean. And a, um, an insult in a foreign language, I don't really need to know what that means. But it's fun to have that footnote in there that lets you know what it is. I really, really like the book so far, even though I'm only three chapters in. I think I really just like John Green, which is abnormal for me because I don't tend to enjoy men's writing as much as women's writing. It's just how it is. I feel like this book bridges the gap really well. I have a podcast recommendation. It is Mondot Stitches with Diane, and it is not a knitting, spinning, crocheting podcast. It is a cross-stitch podcast, but I know a lot of fibery folk on Ravelry are into other types of fiber crafts also, and Diane is very, very enjoyable. Her work is gorgeous. She has been working on some really, really beautiful pieces. And she is very calming and soothing to sit around and listen to. So I recommend her podcast if you are at all interested in cross-stitching. Okay, on to the part where I kick out my friends. So if you are Josh or Haley, um, you need to leave now. And your packages will be arriving shortly because your stuff is finished. Yay! So I hope you guys like your stuff when you get there, but seriously, go away. Okay. Hopefully they're gone and they're not waiting. And Haley, really, I'm going to talk about your stuff first. So you need to click off now. For Haley, I made a pair of knee socks because she keeps saying that she wants to make a pair, blah, 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 but she hasn't done it yet. Haley is from the Knit Two Together podcast, and she um, she knits a lot of socks, but they're all like ankle socks. So I used two different yarns together. This is Leading Men Fiber Arts, the 80-20 mix. The colorway is Deep Sea, and it is the Showstopper Base. And then the other color I use is the, it's from 716 Knit, 716 Sock. I feel an attack of dumb blonde coming on. And it was the ZK 2014 colorway. And I thought they went toge together pretty well. I wasn't sure if I was going to need more than a full skein of yarn, so I decided to just go with two. And what I did was I took the Jack pattern by Regina Sada and did that on the tops of the feet and across the front of the sock, which I'm going to now take off my sock blocker because I feel like that would be easier to show you on my hand. Okay, so there is the jack pattern. It is a, um, a ribbing pattern with slip stitches, free pattern on Ravelry, very well written, easy to follow. I believe it has both the chart and the written instruction for the sock. So there's the sock pattern, and I did the toes, heels, and cuffs in um, just one yarn. So this is the Leading Men Fiber Arts, and this is the 716 Knit. And then for the foot, I striped every round, changing the color. And then I continued that pattern up the back of the leg a little until I got to the calf. So Haley and I have, um, we're very different body types and normally when I make socks for my sister or my best friend, we have very similar builds. My sister's a little bit taller. My best friend's a little bit shorter, but our legs are like, I can use my leg as a, as a, um, what am I talking about as a, as a model, I guess. 
for how the socks should fit because we're all pretty similar. Haley and I, different body types. So I couldn't just use my leg, which is a skinny chicken leg, to go off of. And I wanted to make her knee highs, but I wanted to do it in a way so that they would fit her and I wouldn't have to worry about it. So I decided to leave the back open and I made a crocheted eye cord versus a knitted one because that would have taken way too long. And um, I crocheted along the edges of the leg of the sock because I knit it flat. I knit this part flat, which meant that I changed the striping pattern to be every other row. So then on the leg, the, um, the color change changes a little bit, which I actually really like. I really like socks that have a different thing going on the foot of the sock versus the leg of the sock. So hopefully Haley likes that. And if she doesn't, mm, she can not wear the socks and just not tell me. Um, so I laced up the back so that it could be bigger or smaller or whatever, whatever needed to happen for the legs to fit. So hopefully they will fit. I'm a little nervous that they won't, but hopefully they will fit and they are knee high. And I did not use a pattern to figure out the, the calf, the back, any of that. I just made it up as I went. On to Josh's blanket squares. So I'm going to show you all the colors and all the yarn first because I imagine I'll just splice in little blurbs about each square as I finish them. I don't know, I didn't really think about this, but that's that's what I'm thinking now. So the colors that I'm using, um, I pulled this out of my stash. So this was a small ball. I'm going to have to get more. This is Red Heart Super Saver in coffee. I have TLC Essentials in Robin Egg. The, uh, the skein of white that will just never go away. Lion Brand Pound of Love. Karen Simply Soft in Gray Heather. And Karen Sheepish in chartreuse-ish. I think I said that right. I don't know. That's a lot of a lot of color names. Anyway, I have one square finished right this minute, so I'm going to show that to you. And this square is called, I don't remember what it's called. Hold on. Linked Treble Crochet Pinwheel Square. Am I showing you the front side or the back side? That's the front side. So I used the blue, the brown, and the green, and I used a USI 5.5 millimeter hook. I'm so discombobulated because it's Friday, and I never record on Friday, but I wanted to do this all before I got confused or whatever, and if I waited till Monday, then I'd have to have this out until Monday, and I just want to put it away. Anyway, uh, modifications to the pattern. The, I did the, uh, the trebles here, but then for the other three sides, I changed to, um, linked double crocheted, and then I did a single crochet border. Square number two, this is 16 circles square by Beatrice Medina. I used a US size I-9 for this. And this has a really cool construction. So this first part, the first um, quarters are one round and then you finish out this on the second round and then you do the same thing, just the inner parts of these circles for the following round. This is supposed to be a six inch square but you would have to use much smaller needles because this is actually a 10 inch square total. Um, I added a few border rounds onto it, which made it bigger. But even so, I did try to make this as a six inch square once and it was definitely bigger than six inches. Square number three is called On the Ha Crochet Square by Jackie Goldburn. 
This has all of the colors in it. And it's a basic um, math based pattern so you could make it as large as you wanted to. I'm pretty sure there's some information on a border but I didn't even read it. I just, when I got close, I just put on my own border. And square number four is friendship ring square, which is kind of awkward to try to hold up and show you. It's by Terry Krupa. The original pattern has kind of a lacy bit where my white is. I didn't want to make it lacy, so I just oh, improvised to make it solid. Square number five is Alter Ego by Alter Ego Crochet Square by Jackie Goldborn. Number six is Double Treble Burst Square by Amelia Beebe. Those two are both free. Square seven is Forest Chains by Jessica Phillips. And this is a paid for um, pattern, which I must have gotten as a free thing sometime. I, um, I modified this to have more, um, an extra ridge on these, the arms of the cross thing. Impossible Hexagon 12 inch square by Stramenda. Carousel Square by Priscilla Hewitt. Moon Granny Square by Patricia Pisani. Pinwheel Star Square by Bonnie Pierce. Celtic Cross by Donna Kay, which I had to modify because the square was getting too big too fast. So this little piece right here, I changed out instead of Instead of doing a white round after this brown round, which I obviously didn't do, I just um, ch changed out these four stitches on each side to keep to give it the cross look that it was supposed to have. In the actual pattern, you just do another round, and mine was just going. Um, mine was just getting too big too fast because it's a twelve inch. It's designed to be a twelve inch square. I'm making ten inch squares. And it's designed to use a smaller hook than I'm using because I'm just using a size I hook for everything so that all the stitches are the same size. Granny Spiral Square by PK Olson, which I modified completely out of laziness. Um, each side is supposed to be different, but as you can see, this right here, those two sides are the same color. And um, I'm okay with that. I actually kind of like it with the two sides being the same and then the other two being completely different. I think it looks kind of cool. Celtic Knot Square by Carol Wijma, W-I-J-M-A. Shapeshifting in 12 by Aurora Suminen. I modified it to be smaller because it's supposed to be, the pattern is written for a 12 inch square instead of a 10 inch square. And I promise when it's laying down, it's flatter than this. It's just, you know, sometimes things want to argue with you. Op Art Afghan Square by Jennifer Christensen. Pretty Weave Square by Samantha Heap. It's meant to be a four inch by four inch square, so obviously I had to do some um, some adjustments to make it into a ten inch square. But I like the way that it turned out, and I purposely did the um, the stripes the these ones so that they would be a pattern, but not um, not a regular pattern. Tamara's Kismet Square by Jesse Rayo Rayot. I don't know R A Y O T. And um, it's got these really cool texture things that you do by manipulating stitches. It was a very fun square. And it definitely took me a moment to figure out what was going on. But the pattern is very, very well written. It's, um, 
it's a blog post, so it's free. And it takes you, the blog post has video embedded of how to do the stitches and also picture tutorials. So you can do either video or pictorials, whichever one works better for you. This is Spikes Strike by Sanhita Carr. Broomstick Lace Afghan Square, which is the first time I've done broomstick lace, and it was actually pretty interesting. Like I understood the concept of it, but having never done it before, it took me a moment to figure out what it was telling me to do, but then I did, and I am pretty pleased with how it turned out. Can't really see it because it blends in, but it's really cool. Ad Astra by Chris Simon. Weekend in Stockholm Throw by Debbie Stoller. I actually found this, I found the pattern for this to be not, I didn't find it to be well written. I had a lot of trouble trying to get through it, but other people who had made the pattern had made really good notes on what they had done. So definitely if you're interested in making this square, which it turns out nicely, it looks nice. And it's not that difficult once you read other people's comments on it. I would highly recommend looking at Ravelry for that. Le Vesinet by Sigrun Hugui. That's all going to be in the show notes. Pronunciation was terrible. Very cool. This does require a little bit of um, putting things together. These are not attached as you go. You make the nine circles and then you attach them and then you go from there. Squaring the Big Circle by Kate Jenks. It's one of my favorite go-to like all around good squares. It's just fun. You can use, it looks really good using a variety of um, color placement and it's just a, a good general square. I finished the Riff Socks a while ago actually. I just forgot to record. So this is what they look like. They have this pattern up the front and then the they cross on the sides instead. Um, I'm pretty sure the pattern says to do this cross again. I'm pretty sure that that's the pattern repeat. It's a free pattern on Nitty. Um, it's toe up. But I think I would have run out of yarn if I had done that. Or they just would have been really, really long because this is not a short leg. Josh wears size 10, I think, shoes or nines or something. I don't know. I knew when I was making them what size. So anyway, here's the foot with the heel and then the leg comes out additionally this far. So if I had done another repeat, it just would have been really, really long and he would wear them. He has like knee high kilt hose that he has worn. So I, he would wear them, but I just wasn't. I don't know. I would have felt like I would have needed to do calf increases and stuff and I wouldn't want to mess with it. And one final shooing away. Um, James, Dancing Geek, if you have sat through all of this, it's now time for you to go away so that I can talk about the project that I'm making for you without spoiling your surprise. So I'll give you a moment to set down your knitting and then set send it away. First, I will show you the bag that the project is in. This is my tetrahedron bag, which is sewn by Lindsay. She has an Etsy shop. I love this bag. It holds a ton of stuff. Currently, it has the contents of my wallet, but not actually my wallet because my wallet is too heavy. It has the important things for my wallet for, for work purposes. It has a bottle of Wolf Farms lotion, a full-size bottle of lotion, just chilling and a knitting project. James, I expect you to be gone by now because that was a lot of chattering. So my knitting project has one 100 gram ball of sock yarn and one 50 gram ball of sock yarn. 
plus the project is itself. I am making for James who won the um, the hand knit item from my potiversary. I am making a hat. This is the string band by Stephen West. I am about 60% through with this project, I would say. So it will uh, it will look something like that, except there will be a green section with buttons going up the side. I've worn my string band hat on this podcast a few times, so you will have um, you'll have probably seen it by now. And I will show you this finished project before I send it off on its way across the ocean. I don't know what this yarn is. Haley sent it to me, oh, I think two years ago at this point. Um, but it's got um, two different shades of orange. It, it kind of almost pinky-ish orange and then a yellow orange, but maybe just, you know, not a pinky orange. I don't know. I think it looks fine with the green. I don't think it looks too girly, hopefully. James thinks it looks fine. And then it also has cream and black. And this green yarn is, um, I think it might be a Joann's yarn. It is whatever I used for the heels and toes of the two pairs of socks that I knit with separate heel toe colors. So it's the leftovers of that. And yeah, this is going pretty quickly. It is my work knitting because I can knit and walk and talk and be on break and whatever with it. And it, I also don't have to look at it so much. So it's fine sitting in my car in the parking lot before work when it's still dark outside. So yeah, hopefully this will be finished next week. And that is what I will be, um, this and the blanket, those will be the things that I'm really, really pushing to finish this week. And I believe that is all. So I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string and I will see you next week. Bye.